Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Video Questions, episode 305. Each week we meet here to answer the questions asked on the uh, SEO Questions community on Google Plus and the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight, um, we have uh, uh, Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's based in London in the UK. Um, he is uh, also a Google top contributor or a Google product expert now, I think, guys, um, on the uh, AdSense uh, community. Tim Kappa is uh, uh, CEO of onlineownership.com. He's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Uh, he uh, is also a Google top contributor. Uh, sorry, I'll now, I'll now take a while to get that right. Google product expert. Is that is that what I'm supposed to say these days, product expert? Yeah, yeah, we're product experts now. Don't you forget it. Product experts, eh? Well, well, well. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, okay, Tim can be found at onlineownership.com. Uh, also, David Razam. Uh, David uh, is uh, a copywriter for 30 odd years, an SEO copywriter for 12. Uh, he's based uh, on the southern side of uh, uh, the UK, and um, David can be found at writingforseo.org. Oh, Jason, um, Jason uh, uh, recently. Uh, um, judged to be Australian Search Personality of the Year for 2018. And um, uh, Jason uh, is, oh, I forgot your company name, Jason. What was it? I'm sorry, mate. Uh, it was, uh, it's called Overdose Digital. That's right. Yep, Overdose Digital. That's it. Okay. So we're, we're showing... Uh, a picture of the Sydney Opera House, um, and you were there on Tuesday night for the SEMrush uh, Australian Search Awards. Um, what was it like on the ground there, mate? It was fantastic. Um, I think the SEMrush guys done a great job at um, organising the event and making it happen in Australia for the very first time. Um, so on the night, I think we had a total of about uh, 200 odd search engine marketers uh, in the building. So we had about 20 tables. We had a local celebrity called Osher Gunsberg, who's the host of The Bachelor, who watches The Bachelor anyway, but he's really popular. All the girls were frothing over him. Um, he was the host for the night. Um, there was good food, good fun. Open bar tab, that's why that matters. <laughs> uh, Tim Kappa wouldn't have liked that. Uh, he doesn't like competition for the girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, my G Semrush, they, they've done some great, great, great things. Uh, I think this is uh, this was a, uh, I think Masterstroke selecting the, um, Tim's a great fan. Yeah, it was a really, really good venue. I mean, they, you know, they've got a good tool set. And I mean, they didn't have to do this for the industry, but um, they chose to do it for Australia because we're so far away from Europe and US and the rest of the world that, you know, um, us search marketers over here tend to get neglected. And um, yeah, it's good on them for um, helping us grow this market, which is great. Yeah, I wouldn't say uh, so far away so much as so far ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, did any, anything happen? Um, uh, like um, that? Oh, no, look. Um, I tell you what, do you, do you have time to stick with us for a few minutes, uh, Jason? We're just about to uh, uh, answer the questions. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. definitely. Okay. Uh, just let me reset that. Yeah. 
There we are. That looks better. All right, our um, our first uh, question tonight uh, was um, um, titled uh, "Keywords Found 20 to 25 Times on a Single Page." I feel like it's 1998. Um, Varen Kuma Riot says, "Hi guys, I have a new job from tomorrow onwards." Um, why is our rival's site not penalized um, uh, for such a long time when it has uh, keywords 20 to 25 times uh, repeated on a single page, but it's ranking on the first page and has not uh, been penalized? What can we do to beat it? Thanks. Well, uh, Varun, uh, firstly, I think you're kind of just assuming <laughs> that because they've sort of uh, keyword stuffed, um, that that's why you're winning, or they're winning rather. Um, you know, it's not just that page per se. It could be the entire site that's working, uh, and that's why Google thinks that that's the most relevant um, uh site or page for that particular query um ideally they shouldn't be keyword stuffing that's in an ideal world but it still happens and uh sites like that still do rank because it's the site as a whole not necessarily just that page thank you tim Right. Anybody else? Uh, I'll jump in for a bit. Um, I, I completely agree with Tim. You know, there's the Google looks at so many other factors on on a website, not just a web page, and it also depends on um, the length of the content on the page. Um, you know, I hate to say the word keyword density, but you know, if the if the page is extremely long, sometimes it does look a bit natural when you mention the same keyword. Um, 25 times and if it's written very very well and very very in depth and you know it reads and sounds natural people can get away with stuff like that you know so it's sometimes there's a bit of creativity um and also there could be other factors contributing to you know why they're ranking so well thank you jason we'll have to get you on a, on a regular basis all right <laughs> let's um go to the next we'll call that one an answer um, Mike Fisher Kirshner asked a question on X Robots tag. Um, he said a client has implemented an X Robots tag no index on pages that 301 redirect to another page. Of course, the unspoken question is uh, um, what um, is the consequence? I have to call out Michael Martinez and um, uh, all, all of the other forum heroes that um, uh, answer questions through the week. Yeah, I, I see Michael said on this one, uh, he said, I don't think the crawlers will see both the redirect and the no index. Um, is the X robots tag generated by the redirect code itself? Uh, if not, I think it's just a redirect. Yeah, I, I, tend, I tend to agree. I don't think they'll see the no index tag because they'll probably oh mm, i'm actually yeah. not sure now yeah i think because it's in the header response right so if you see the head so the response code to be 301 redirect but at the same time there's x robots tag no index so i would think that both i i, I would think that the bots would see both conditions so they would understand so it, they would understand that this page redirects another page, 301. At the same mm -hmm. time, it will see the X robots tag and say that, oh, it's no index. Yeah, I agree with you, Mr. Taki. So yeah. if the intent is to redirect and you know and you don't want the no index bit, then I would re I would remove the X robots tag. Cool. All right, um, we've only got seven questions tonight. We've already done two of them. Uh, our next is um, from Kajal Max Westphaling. And um, 
It's titled Removing Site and Google Webmaster Tools. Uh, Kajal said, um, three questions removing a site and Google Webmaster Tools or Google Search Console. Uh, in relation to my other post this week on a client wanting to move uh, to a new domain name because it is shorter. Oh, sorry about that, guys. We've got um, a, a break in our, our questions tonight. Um, okay, that's all I've got. Uh, if you, you guys could have a look at um, Facebook, um, you can see the rest of the questions. Um, no, okay. Is, uh, is, is, is he referring to changing domain names, you know, something such as something shorter and easy to remember? And I think maybe the question is asking how to initiate the site change, the URL site change um, function in Webmaster Tools or Google Search Console. Yeah, I, I think that's what it is, Jason. I, um, but, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Should I read out the whole post? Yeah, that'd be great, Mr. Taki. Help okay. save, save me. So, you know, three questions regarding moving site and Google Webmaster Tools. In relation to my other post this week on a client wanting to move a site to a new domain because it's shorter, one. When I changed the site from HTTP to HTTPS originally for security reasons, I did not keep the old entry for HTTP in the Webmaster Tools. I deleted it. I suspect this may have lost some SEO rankings as they certainly did dip a lot. Can I add it back now? Should I add it back it now? If so, how? Just add the entry or do I need to also do other things? Two, if I add it back, um, do I have to re-verify this? Three, if I have to re-verify this, can the site have multiple entries? Four, when I move to the new domain name, do I have to keep the old HTTP, the HTTPS, and the new site all active? And five, do I need to remove older verification entries? I don't think you can have more than one. This is in WordPress. Thank you all. Thanks, Mr. Taki. I got confused reading that out. <laughs> Go ahead. So the question, I think the important question is in you know, the sort of first bit, and I think answers will depend on that. Um, so it, if I understood the post correctly, um, there are two separate processes. If one was to move a site from HTTP to HTTPS, and I think there's a move from one domain to another. And my sort of understanding now here is that it's, it's taken place uh, consecutively. So he had moved the old site, the old domain from HTTP to HTTPS, and then he's moved the site the, um, from old site HTTPS to new site HTTPS, if that makes sense. I think that's where I got confused. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I, I think um, we'll move on from this and um, uh, I'll have a look at the question through the week and we'll, I'll add it in back, back in for next week uh, if, if, we, if we need to. Uh, sorry about that, Kajal, um, but that's what we have for you so far. Eric Paulino has asked a question uh, uh, it's titled, starting, on, starting in August, uh, the traffic uh, has dropped by half. Uh, Eric said, hello, guys. I'm clueless about what happened to make my search traffic drop like this. Um, any hints? I haven't made any changes, no updates or SSL changes. Starting uh, in August, uh, it just dropped by half or less. Oh, and thanks in advance for any hints.
this one was um, 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 about the, uh, the the core um, updates which took place um, just after the start of August. Um, um, I think Tim answered this um, on the uh, com community. Um, we had quite a few uh, people answering on the community. George G is another person I should call out. Um, we really are grateful for our uh, um, people who answer the questions uh, in our groups and, and the, the community on Google+. Plus. Okay, so uh, have we answered this one, this question? No. This before? Yeah, on question four, Tim, go ahead. Okay, so um, I looked at that site and it predominantly looks like well it, it's a blog it's in the i would say it's in the health genre now there is the theory i mean it's uh, there was the medic update but it, it was lit it was actually a, a core algorithmic update and um the travel sites actually got hit worse than um than, than in the health industry but um and that was in a recent update on, on um article i was reading by rank ranger where they analyzed a couple of hundred thousand you know verticals etc cetera, etc cetera. anyway um a few things i noticed on that was so you are in a uh should we say a trust kind of environment um so in, in that sense, I would look at um, some things, you know, obviously the site, I only had a brief look at it, but, you know, there are some things there. You, you, you've got um, ads, which according to some, some articles out there at the minute, it's the fact that your ads are almost, your, 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 your site, is there for your ads and not the ads of uh, you know as as an additional um so i would i would possibly look at your home page especially your home page um with all the ads trying to push products um your article is really well written um uh, that you know I'd, I, they, they look very well written um and it's got you know a nice wealth of content there but um, you need to, I would suggest, looking at the quality rates guidelines, just understanding a little bit more about um, um, j just looking just looking more about what Google is thinking about in terms of of this eat. Um, but there could be there could there could be many, many things there. Uh, there's also this week, there's also um, a lot of people reporting online that sites that saw a massive plummet are over the last couple of days seeing a massive surge again so you know uh, rather than taking some kind of knee-jerk reaction i would you know as best practice anyway you know do do an entire um site audit for yourself um Certainly, look at your ads, uh, and and just look at the just look at their site. Other people have seen, you know, that they're, they're doing they're doing some other, you know, other people have mentioned other things within the site, but um, I would certainly just do a site audit, and also for your own for your own sake, read a bit about um, the quality guidelines in terms of eat um and how google may be perceiving these kind of genres and if there are any kind of changes you can make um i would also i think it's maury hayes has written a few articles regarding some sites that she helped uh with, with, with in in that genre and how you can kind of look at um your site uh, with a checklist and say, yeah, I'm doing this. No, I'm not doing that. Mm, this, this, you know, my layout might be a bit, bit much pushing too much product, etc. Or maybe looking at a different way of actually having a product page in that sense. Um, 
but so yeah, I mean, it's it's that, that those are things off the top of my head that you could uh, be looking at. Thank you, Tim. Great answer. Um, anybody else um, want to add to that? Okay, let's um, move on to the next. This one from Jason Hyangchul Kang. Um, it, it's titled, Can Someone Explain What the Point of Using a Canonical? Um, he said, uh, can someone explain what is the point of using a canonical? Brackets, uh, let's say if you somehow end up having two identical pages, bracket um, when you can just keep the better performing page in terms of traffic and rankings and just simply delete the other one you go ahead yeah so uh the, the thing here is if you've got near identical, right? Well, you shouldn't have created the near identical in the first place, but let's just say you did. Um, if it's a standalone page, then yeah, delete it and then redirect it to the to, to the other one. Uh, be, if it's, you know, obviously that way, if it's accrued any links, it's been shared. You're not going to lose any value by redirecting it to the to the shall we for arguments they call the original. But canonicals are best served where you have paginated pages, in the sense that um, you've got an e-commerce site, you've got a product that is a pink, pink fluffy elephant, and then you can select large, extra large. Or, or medium, and that creates paginations of the same product. And this is where a canonical is best used to point those paginated um, or, or the parameter pages, rather, sorry, parameter pages for that product, that specific page, and you canonicalize it back to the, uh, to the original. So you're saying this large one, which is exactly the same, but this is the large, this page is exactly the same, but this is for the extra large, and this is for the, the 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 medium one. They're all the same, and the canonical saying treat these as the actual um, the actual you know originating page. So that's where canonicals are are best used. If you have two pages which are on defined URLs, then yeah. Delete, deleted, and redirect it if it's got any equity in it. If it's something that you just created out of, you know, uh, oh shit, I just created this and it's a freaking duplicate and damn, um, then you can just four or four it because it, it didn't, uh, it, it didn't over time, you know, accrue anything, any links or uh, any shares, social shares. You don't want someone that's clicking on something ending up on something that's 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 four or four. Um, so you know 301 it so in that instance delete you're correct uh and and 301 but canonicals are best so i i think you've somehow you know someone's obviously said canonicalize it but yeah there's also instances where for example you can't really 301 so in some in some instances you'll get a site where the domain is you know, ending in .com, but you'll get uh, identicals, which are, you know, if if they've been on another platform, so you'll get the forward slash index.php, for example. Um, depending on how the site's been built, if that is removed and 301 redirected, it can, uh, and I have come across instances where it literally creates like a redirect loop, um, especially when there's other pages within the site. And um, in that instance, you could canonicalize that index.php to say, treat this page as the actual home page. 
Um, so that's another instance where it could be used where a 301 might balk the entire thing. Um, but if it's two pages on a defined URL, just delete and redirect uh, or not redirect. It's, it's entirely up to you. Thank you, Tim. All right, um, let's uh, call this an answer for Jason and we'll move to the next. This one from um, Burke Communications. Um, do keywords in pop-ups on websites contribute to S SEO? Um, for example, if I'm on the homepage and I click on a picture with a key with keyword rich text that pops up in the, in the middle of the page, does that text help my SEO for the home page? Thank you. I imagine he means um, like that when, when you hover over and um, the, the uh, alt tag appears or not. I think we I think we've got some old thinking here again have we not um, we're thinking that SEO is about uh, slipping in as many keywords as possible in as many places as you can um, think about the whole page think about themes think about getting uh, some good content don't go about it in a piecemeal Meccano fashion of attacking of, of attaching bits and pieces of of, um, of, of keywords and stuff uh, in, in in places around just get your content right get your um, get your um, your overall um, pitch on your site correct get the quality of your content correct don't worry about things like this yeah so that little box popping up is generally referred to as your alt image text <coughs> if it's actually appearing when you hover over an image um then that's your css which is saying to display that alt image text um and some you'll notice some sites don't have it uh but the actual image does use an alt uh, an alt image uh, does use alt image text um so it's just you know your your, your the, the formatting which is saying either display it or don't display it but either way if you're using it and that is best practice to use uh alt image text on an image in the proper way um google still finds that you know because it appears with it's within the source and it's it's on the uh, you know for the image source um so it does appear you don't have to have it pop up um for it to add any additional weight you should certainly be adding alt image text to your images um one uh predominantly for what it was used for or originally intended for was for screen readers um for the you know uh for disabled you know short of sighted or partially blind or whatever the case may be um and it also helps Google to understand why you're using that image and what the image is. So if it's an image of, um, you know, an, a, an Australian trying to ride a pink fluffy elephant, then you will say Australian trying to ride a pink fluffy elephant unsuccessfully. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing that an Australian can't ride. Um, all right, let's answer that for um, Burke Communications. And thank you, David. Thank you, Tim. Um, let's have a look at the last one. This one from Rajam Roos. I'm marking up an article on my website with article markup. Rajam said, uh, I'm finally getting around to adding markup to my sites, brackets change platforms in July. Um, Close bracket. So although I know the importance of it, this is the first time I've manually worked with it. When I mark up the article body, um, is it um, recommended to mark up the entire thing if it's long? Uh, that seems like a big ch chunk of JSON LD code and I'm, I'm, that I'm sticking in my header. Or is that normal? Additionally, I'm marking up an article on my website with article markup. 
is this incorrect uh, if it's not a news or ma magazine article? Thanks. Um, if you're marking up the article, the whole page, then I would implement schema.org on page, as it were, so that instead of using JSON-LD, if that makes sense. I, I don't think it makes sense to put the entire article as article body in JSON-LD. You mark up the page so that um, the actual content of the page, the actual article is marked up as such using, you know, divs and spans and things like that. Uh, I, th I think I agree with you. I, I was actually, <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm, I'm glad you gave that answer, actually, because I, I was trying to figure out what was going on here. Um, so, yes, yes, I think, uh, uh, I think that's probably the... the, the 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 best approach um yeah you don't want a, a a load of a load of code slowing your um your page down um which i guess there's a potential for here so yes um in page or on page markup rather than json ld would be the way to go Thank you, David. That's okay. I only just said what Matt Stacky said. I don't know why I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Matt Stacky. All right, let's um, move to the next. Oh, it's that time again. Um, before we go uh, tonight, um, uh, let me ask, um, uh, with, with Tim away and Matt away, um, at the um, Google um, Meetup, uh, will we run next week or uh, leave it for the following week? Um, well, it entirely depends on whether you think you and I can get through it. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure we can. Just <laughs> do it. Just uh, we, without Tim, we, we've got no sex appeal. Oh, thank you. Get you, Ducky. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, look, um, th thank you very much for, for watching. Um, your interest in what we do uh, makes what we do worthwhile. We'll be back uh, at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. And um, uh, until then, it's good night. Okay, I have to click this button. Go on. You can do it. I'll try. <laughs>